Praise the Lord. Praise I'm Pastor Sharon, and this is Pastor Rock, and we just want to welcome all of you here this morning. If this is your first time this morning, we just ask you to be blessed, and let's give them a hand hand for them. Hallelujah. I just want to speak a blessing over you, first of all, this morning. How many of you could use a blessing? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I just speak over your people this morning. I speak your word of blessing over them, Father God. I thank you they are blessed coming in and they are blessed going out. I speak healing to their bodies. I I speak healing and strength and health to their bodies in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, that your word goes forth this morning, Father God, and does not return void, but it performs that which it is sent to perform. And we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Turn it over to Pastor. It is neighbor looking time. Get you to point at your neighbor. Smile at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Now, some of y'all don't want to do neighbor looking time this morning. (laughs) Go with the flow. It is neighbor looking time. I tell you, just bob your head at your neighbor this morning. Yeah, so we just all go on the flow. And say, point at your neighbor and say, I came, I came to, receive to receive God's good word this, this day. And I declare, I declare I'm, ready. I'm ready. Are you ready, Are you ready? To, receive to receive God's good word this, this day? And I declare, I declare I'll never, I'll never, 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 ever, ever be the same again, again. in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus Christ on the rest of this service. Father, we thank you that the eyes of our understanding are enlightened according to the hope of your calling. We thank you for revelation knowledge this day. We thank you that the word of the Lord will have free course in our midst. We thank you for strong utterance and strong anointing this day. And that your people make a strong drawing on the anointing of God this day. We thank you for answers coming this morning in your presence. Holy Spirit, I ask you to help me as I speak this morning. I yield myself as a vessel to you. Speak through me, Holy Spirit. Help me to say exactly what I should say in the way that I should say it. Help me to leave off anything I need to leave off. Help me to flow with you, Holy Spirit. Not ahead and not behind, but right on time. Father, I thank you that we're preaching and teaching your word. And you said signs and wonders follow your word. So we're expecting signs and wonders to follow your word this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. The title of the message today is The Big Picture. How many of y'all have the big picture? Amen. I'm going to give y'all a a little joke. I normally don't start out like this, but I'm going I'm to start out with just a little small joke. This guy went to heaven. And he got there, and there's an angel that it greeted him, and, and he, the angel starts showing him around from mansion to mansion, from street to street. And he's just amazed at heaven. He's like, wow, this is so cool. Everything is so neat. And then he gets to this one little place, and it's a shack. It is so messed up. It is not even halfway built. It looks awful. And he said, what's up with that? And the angel said, that's your house. And he said, what? He said, We did the best we could with all the material that you sent up. (laughs) (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Amen or me, amen. (laughs) Ask if you will to get your Bibles and go to Matthew chapter 6. Verse number 19, I love it when people are excited about the word, amen. This scripture kind of just jumped off the page when Ish was doing the tithing testimonies a few weeks ago. It just kind of jumped off the page at me, and I knew I'd be teaching it in the future, but um, the Lord really just dealt with me this week about this scripture. Matthew six nineteen, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Now, he didn't say it's wrong to have treasure. Because a lot of people will read this and they'll say, well, you can't have treasure. The Bible says you can't have treasure. And that's not what he said. It's not wrong to have nice things. And it's not wrong to have things of value. God wants you to have the best. He wants to give you and me really, really good things. 
But he doesn't want those things to have us. Amen. I'm going to have to switch it out. Ish. I'm going to have to switch to a different one. I'm sorry. We're just uh, getting used to this new mic. And I'm, I guess I'm jiggling or moving too much. <laughs> Glory to God. It's just a little thing. Amen. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God. Praise God. Can you hear me now? No. <laughs> Can you hear me now? No. I have a green light. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Matthew 6, same scripture, 19 through 21. This is in the message translation. Don't hoard treasure down here. Now, that kind of makes it a little different. Hoarding and having is two different things. Hoarding is, you know, a whole bunch of, a whole bunch, more than you could ever use, more than your relatives could ever use. It's just stockpiled. Uh, where, down here where it gets eaten by moths and corroded by rust or worse, stolen by burglars. Stockpile treasure in heaven where it's safe from moth and rust and burglars. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place you'll most want to be and end up being. So our treasures, the little things that God gives us, we can't let those things be the most important things in our life. The, the blessings of the Lord, that can't take the first place in our life. And that's what he's saying. And same church to your heart will always be where your treasure is. So it's not wrong to have nice things. It's wrong for nice things to have you. Amen. See, one day we will see what is really important. And it won't be, on that day, it won't be how much money you have in the bank is the most important thing. It won't be how important your job is. It won't be how many friends you have on Facebook. It won't be winning an Oscar or winning an Emmy or writing a best-selling book. It'll be about doing God's work on this earth. Did I do something that has eternal value? Did I help people? Did I step out of myself? There was a, a man that called me, this is uh, several years ago, and um, he was a member here, and he called me up and he said, um, I just wanted to tell you, I want to give a special offering. He'd never done it like this, so I was very surprised that he called me. He said, I'm going to give you $2,000 and I'm going to use it in the church wherever you think is, is best needed. And I said, okay, and I'm, I'm still kind of a little puzzled why he called me about it. And he said, because... You know, people just put in the offer. They don't, they don't run it by me. And um, he said, the reason I'm calling you is because the money is so messed up. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I dug it up out of my yard. And he said, it's $2,000, but it's, um, it's like corrupted. It's the, he had put it in a plastic bag, but the water had got to it. And it was just fixing to be gone completely. Another four weeks, five weeks underneath that ground, it would have been totally worthless. And as it is, we took it to the bank. It looked just pathetic. It had holes all in it. It was all messed up. But the bank honored it. I'm sure they destroyed it, but they honored it. And, uh, you know, his money was able to go with the work of God. Now, it's funny because that money was fixed to get so corrupted that it wasn't going to be used for anything. Now, he realized, the, the Lord started dealing with him. That he was supposed to give it. He was supposed to dig it up out of his yard and give it. His wife didn't even know that he gave it. His wife didn't even know he had it. He had, he had put, that was he money. <laughs> or she money. You know, she don't know I got it. She ain't getting it. <laughs> so, I guess, so I guess he put it never mind. <laughs> no reason to cause division on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Ladies, you've got you've got heat money. I know it, it works both ways. <laughs> but um, he gave it for God's work. He gave it for God's glory. He sacrificed what he could have done with it. Now he could have bought a lot of things with it, but he felt led of the Lord to to give it into God's work. He saw the big picture. Day by day, we're building for eternity. How different our lives would be if we thought about that. Every gentle word that we speak every generous act every unselfish deed will become a pillar of eternity in the life to come Matthew 25 verse number 34 this is the message then the king will say to those on his right enter you who are blessed by my father that's what's coming to you in this kingdom it's been ready for you since the world's foundation and here's why 
I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was homeless and you gave me a room. I was shivering and you gave me clothes. I was sick and you stopped to visit. I was in prison and you came to me. Then those sheep are going to say, Master, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and come to you? Then the king will say, I'm telling you the solemn truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. Yeah. You did it to me. He goes on to say, then he'll turn to the goats, the ones on his left, and say, get out, worthless goats. You're good for nothing but the fires of hell. And why? Because I was hungry and you gave me no meal. Mm -hmm. I was thirsty. See, they can't see the big picture. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was homeless and you gave me no bed. I was shivering and you gave me no clothes. Sick and in prison and you never visited. Mm -hmm. Then those goats are going to say, Master, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or homeless mm -hmm. or shivering or sick or in prison and didn't help? And he will answer them, I'm telling you the solemn truth. Whenever you fail to do one of these things to someone who was being overlooked or ignored, that then these goats will be hurt. That was me, and you failed to do it to me. Then those goats will be herded to their eternal doom, but the sheep to their eternal reward. Now, I want you to understand, and I want the revelation to hit you this morning, that you get a reward for things here, and we get them on the other side. We get them both ways. When we're doing something for God's work or doing something for somebody else from the heart this, this wanting to give and wanting to help and, and just a heart that's just right with the Lord, I'm telling you, there will be a blessing. There will be a reward and it will be here and there will be another reward on the other side. Yes. It's not just here. That's Amen. the big picture. Yes. One day we'll see what's really important and those things will follow us into eternity. Some things that people think are going to follow them into eternity are not going to follow them into eternity. Some things that people are thinking that are very, very important in the world's view of things, maybe they are, but we're not, we don't have the world's viewpoint. We're Christians. We're not of this world. From the Lord's standpoint, it's going to be, did you win anybody to the Lord? He's going to say there's a reward for that. Yes. Did you support the Lord's work with your finances? He's going to say there was a reward for that. Mm -hmm. Did you help God's work out? He's going to say there's a reward for that. Mm -hmm. Did you support God's work by being there and strengthening the local body that you were called to? There's a reward for that. Yes. Did you use your gifts for God's glory? There's a reward for that. Amen. Did you encourage one of God's children? There's a reward for that. Mm -hmm. Did you strengthen someone with kind words and kind deeds? There's a reward for that. Matthew 6, and starting verse number 1, I'm going to skip around in this. I'm not going to do, it's through verse 21, but I'm going to skip. This is the Names of God Bible. It says, be careful not to do your works in public in order to attract attention. If you do, your Father in heaven will not reward you. Okay, now we could lose our reward by doing them to draw attention to people. So that when you give to the poor, don't announce it with trumpet fanfare. This is what the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the street in order to be praised by people. Amen. Now, I researched that a little bit about, you know, when the, the hypocrites give money, you know, the, the trumpets blare or whatever. And, and a couple of different commentaries said, yeah, it was a common practice that when they were going to give alms, that they would blow the trumpet and people would come. They would know it's time to give alms. And the hypocrites, of course, you know, made a big deal out of it, of what they were given. They, they drew attention to themselves. And that's where God said you lose your reward if you're drawing the attention to yourself. If you're doing it and it's about you, if it's focusing on you, on giving you glory in some way, then you lose the reward. And another commentary said that the, the giving boxes that they had to take up the alms, uh, part of that giving box was shaped like a trumpet. It was shaped that way, you know, it's big at this end and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And they did that so that people couldn't steal the money out of the box. But the hypocrites, the, it was shaped like a trumpet and, and built like a trumpet. So when they, they take their money, they slap it against the side of it as loud as they could. And they'd make a loud noise like a trumpet blast when they were given. And so he was saying, don't, you know, you don't do that. Don't draw, they were drawing attention to their self. 
And it's not about drawing attention to yourself in any way. It's, a, it's about the Lord. So when you give to the poor, don't announce it with trumpet fanfare. This is what the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets in order to be praised by people. I can guarantee you this truth. That will be their only reward. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They like to stand in synagogues and on the street corners to pray so that everyone can see them. See now, there again, he's not saying not to pray in public. He's saying, actually, if you really want to know the, the essence of this, it's do more of your praying in private. And then when you are called on to pray in public, it won't be something that you're drawing attention to yourself because it's something you ever do. It's just it's going to be because it's just part of your life and it's just what you do. And it's, it's not going to be something to, to focus on you. It'll focus on Him. Yes. It said they like to stand in synagogues and on street corners to pray so that everyone can see them. I can guarantee you this truth, that'll be their only reward. When you pray, go to your room and close the door. Pray privately to your Father who is with you. Your Father sees what you do in private and He will reward you. There it is again. When you fast, stop looking like the hypocrites. They put on sad faces to make it obvious that they're fasting. I can guarantee you this truth. That will be their only reward. When you fast, wash your face and comb your hair. Mm -hmm. Then your fasting won't be obvious. Instead, it will be obvious to your Father who is with you in private. And your Father sees what you do in private and He will reward you. A lot of the translation says He'll reward yes. you openly. Yeah. Same scripture that we started with. Stop storing up treasures for yourself on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal. Instead, store up treasures for yourselves in heaven where moth and rust don't destroy and thieves don't break in and steal. Your heart will be where your treasure is. There was a song, and I'm, I'm actually going to read the lyrics to the song. We, we probably will play it at the end. But I'm going to read some of the lyrics to this song. It's from a few years ago in the body of Christ. It's called Thank You. And some of the lyrics were, I dreamed I went to heaven, and you were there with me. We walked upon the streets of gold beside the crystal sea. We heard the angels singing. Then someone called your name. You turned and saw the young man, and he was smiling as he came. And he said, friend, you may not know me now. Then he said, but wait, you used to teach my Sunday school when I was only eight. And every week you would say a prayer before the class would start. And one day when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm so glad that you gave. Mm -hmm. Then another man stood before you and said, Remember the time a missionary came to your church and his pictures made you cry. You didn't have much money, but you gave it anyway. Jesus took the gift that you gave, and that's why I'm here today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm so glad that you gave. Mm -hmm. One by one they came. Far as the eye could see, each life somehow touched by your generosity. Little things that you had done, sacrifices made, unnoticed on the earth, in heaven now proclaimed. And I know up in heaven you're not supposed to cry, for I'm almost sure there were tears in your eyes. As Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord, he said, My child, look around you. Great is your reward. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm so glad that you gave. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm so glad that you changed. Mm. That you gave. Amen. I was standing in Dollar General this last week. And there was a lady and she was in front of me and she's talking to the, the guy at the checkout. And um, she's, you know, kind of really going on and I'm really not paying attention I'm just you know got my stuff and I'm fixing to check out and um, and she starts crying with the, the checkout guy she just she starts boohooing a little bit I'm like what's up and she started talking to him I guess they had talked before about her son her son is in the military and he had been hurt in some way it was a pretty bad deal and they were going to do surgery on him it was something about his you know, maybe even being paralyzed or something to this effect. I'm, I'm gathering all this, not trying to overhear, but I am overhearing because I'm right behind her. And um, she's telling all this, and she's telling that, 
you know, she didn't understand why they had been praying and praying and praying for him to go ahead and have the surgery. And, and then they, they set up the surgery date and then they changed the surgery date and uh, him and the whole family was very disappointed about it. And then they'd set another surgery date and he's in there for the surgery and he has the surgery. And uh, she goes on to say that there was, um, now she knows why that was changed. The date of that surgery was changed. She said there was a, a man that came to the rehab where he was at. And he was a well-known man. He's an actor. And nobody knows the things that he does. He keeps them private. He's a very wealthy actor. But he goes into this rehab from time to time. The nurses told her this and said nobody, he didn't want anybody to know it. But they know it. There's no way they couldn't know it, the nurses. And said that uh, he goes into this rehab. And a lot of these military guys, a lot of them can't walk anymore period. But they have a new type of wheelchair that's between twenty and $25,000 that'll stand them up and they can do regular activities in this wheelchair. They can even actually play like a short round of golf or stuff. I mean, they can do, it's amazing the things that they can do with this particular wheelchair. But like I say, it's, it's pretty cost prohibitive. It's between twenty and 25000 And the nurse was telling this lady, her son was there at this time. He, he came in, you know, and he, he's done it before. He got everybody one of those wheelchairs. And there's like 20 beds in that hospital. And he would go and visit the people. And um, she said like in the case with her son, him and his wife, they, she lived way off from where they live. And I don't know the situation. All I know is they didn't have a bed. He, was, he had had the back surgery. And he was going to have to be on an inflatable mattress. And the nurse was asking, is there anything you know we can still do? And she said, you know, like to say it's a different state from her and she was just asking about you know mattresses and stuff and she said hang on i think we have something for that and she came back and she said we've got a whole bedroom suit and tempur-pedic mattress and a bed that'll adjust and um it's just been donated and said they, they were checking out of the hospital right then and he had no mattress at that moment you know what was he going to do well within an hour and a half of his checkout time they got ten thousand dollars worth of stuff Bedroom stuff, mattress, temper pee, I mean, all of the nicest stuff that you can imagine sent to their little place. They couldn't even contain all of the stuff at their small apartment. Some of it they had to give back because it, it just wouldn't fit. Uh, he blessed them in such a way. Now, this is somebody that didn't want to be seen of men. He's not trying to be seen of men. But I can't imagine when he stands before God, that's going to be proclaimed. You say, that, that, that was a big deal. It was. It's a very big deal. But God notices the big things and the small things. And they're going to be proclaimed. See, that was an eternal thing. That's going to pass from this side to that side. That was something of eternal importance. And I, I assure you, that will be told in heaven for centuries and centuries and centuries. Just like the little widow's mite that was told over and over. And we're still telling it today. That this man doing this. Try not to be noticed. Try not to draw attention to himself. He's not a Pharisee. He's just trying to help somebody because he has the means of doing it. Yes. And he's trying to do it under the radar. You know, some people try to help, but they're really not trying to be under the radar. Thank you. Thank you very much. He was doing it secretly. He's not trying to draw publicity from it. Matthew 10. Y'all still with me? I feel it. I can feel y'all drawing. Thank y'all. I appreciate it. Matthew 10 and uh, 38 and 39 and then 42. And this is King James. He that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. And he that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Verse number 42. And whosoever shall give to drink one of these little ones a cup of cold water only. In the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. So their rewards for little bitty things that we think are not important, but God says they're huge. They're huge to me. See, heaven doesn't look at things the way we look at things on this earth. The heaven value system is a lot different. There's a reward in heaven and on earth, even for the little things that we do. Have you cooked a meal for somebody else or, or bought somebody else a meal and took it to them? Maybe they were sick or shut in. Have you bought somebody groceries that you knew they were, they were down and out and they, they needed some help? 
Have you paid a bill for somebody? Or, or babysit somebody's kids? There's a reward for that. Have you ever given clothes away or shoes or, or something that's of value to you? Have you ever taken somebody to the doctor? Have you spent time praying for somebody? There's a reward for that. Have you ever given someone a gift to encourage them? There's a reward for that. Have you ever visited somebody who was sick? There's a reward for that. Have you ever sacrificed your time to listen to somebody? There's a reward for that. Maybe you raised children and gave them a home to make sure they had a roof over their head and food and clothes. And maybe they're not even your own children. But you wanted to make sure they were well taken care of. There's a reward for that. And I, and I say also there's a reward for raising your own children. I, I mean that. There's a great reward for raising your own children and putting a roof over their head and making sure they're taken good care of. God will reward you for being a good parent. Maybe you pick somebody up to help them do their errands. There's a reward for that. If you did it with a right heart, not out of a sense of obligation or necessity. <coughs> Maybe you've been praying in secret a lot. There's a great reward for that. Maybe you've made sacrifices to help God's work and nobody knows it. There's a reward for that. If your heart is in it and you're doing it for the right reason, there's a reward in that. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 says, Let each one give as he has made up in his own mind and purposed in his own heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves, he takes pleasure in, prizes above other things, and is unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver, get this, whose heart is in his giving. Whose heart is in his giving. Hmm. Now, this sounds silly, but I'm not trying to be silly, and I'm really not trying to be funny. I believe there's a reward for doing the dishes in heaven. <laughs> now, a lot of people won't qualify for that reward. <laughs> See, because when we grumble, or we complain, or we, we are aggravated, or angry about doing these things, these little things that, you know, are, are life to us. When we complain about those things, the reward gets burned up. It, 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 it just goes, you could, you could teach Sunday school for 20 years and there'd be great reward in that. But if you're complaining about the little kids the whole time, you've lost your reward. Yeah. It'll be burned up with fire. There's a reward for cooking a meal or walking a dog if you do it with the right heart. You say, I don't know what you're talking about, about things being burned up. I'm going to give you another scripture. I'm, I'm coming to a close, but I'm going to give you another scripture. It's 1 Corinthians 3. 11 through 15, this is the common English Bible. No one can lay another, a lay other foundation beside the one that is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So whether someone builds on top of the foundation with gold or silver or precious stones or wood or grass or hay, each one's work will be clearly shown. The day will make it clear because it will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each one's work. If anyone's work survives, they'll get a reward. But if anyone's work goes up in flames, they'll lose it. However, they themselves will be saved as if they'd gone through a fire. So there's some work, some things that we've been doing for the Lord, and, but we've been complaining, and we've been just aggravated, and we've been doing them for the wrong reason. You know, I told you years ago when I first got born again, I enjoyed the fellowship of the people that I was around so much. And I remember after a few weeks or whatever, they asked me, they said, would you go pick up so-and-so? And this man didn't have a way. And, and, but if I picked him up, I'm going to miss the time of fellowship prior to because he, he didn't want to come to the service early and, and it just was going to be a problem. And I thought, man, I don't want to do this. So, you know, being the good little Christian I was, I picked him up. But I didn't like it. I didn't do it out of the right heart. And for the longest time, I just... I just did it. Hang on. God showed me there's a whole message right there. There it is. There it is. I just did it. I just did it. I, I, just, I just took the kids to soccer practice. The Lord knows I didn't want to. I had other things to do. Plus, them screaming kids all in the car at the same time. Mm. I'm tired of that. Look, you were doing good. You lost your reward. Yeah. Up. You opened your mouth. You lost your reward. You complained. You were aggravated. You didn't do it out of the right heart. Oh, 
you cook your husband's husband a wonderful supper, and then you 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 gripe about having to cook. Mm. <sighs> <sighs> I think I'm just gonna stand here for a while. <laughs> so cool. Because everybody's kind of in the same place. <laughs> 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 See, if our heart is in it, our work will survive and we'll get a reward. Yeah. But if we're doing it, whatever we're doing, out of just obligation or necessity or grudgingly or complaining, our work will be burned up and we won't receive our reward. I'm coming to a close. 1 Corinthians 13 and 3 in the Amplified says, Even if I dole out all that I have to the poor in providing food, and if I surrender my body to be burned, or in order that I may glory, but have not love, God's love in me, I gain nothing. In order that I may glory. Do it for the wrong reason. Do it to notice me. Remember the big picture in closing. What will follow you into eternity? It's all about doing God's work on this earth. I'm going to ask you this thing.